Hello everyone, I am Destro, and welcome back to Realm of the Lich King. In this episode, we're going to be painting and detailing our refinery that we built last episode. Now the first thing I'm doing is getting some AK texture paste, this is corrosion texture, and I'm going to be just be dabbing that all over the refinery, anywhere that I think would benefit from some extra texture. This paste doesn't really work in a thin coat. You need to apply it pretty thickly in order to get the corrosion effect to build up correctly. Cardboard canisters, like I've used for this storage tank, have a nasty line on them where the cardboard meets. We're going to be covering that up with a nice big blob of this texture paste. Texture paste covereth a multitude of sins. Okay, so I don't have a concrete paint color. I'm just using some old craft paint acrylics to mix up a nice gray. Black, white, and then a little bit each of some sky blue and green. Uh, these green and blue paints are kind of old, so they're a bit chunky, but uh, that turns out to be kind of a happy little accident as they added a bit of streaks of color and variance to our concrete. Concrete is never just gray. I also use the same paint to cover all of the gravel on the roof. The next step is to paint all of the parts of the build that are going to be metal. I'm starting this off with a coating of burnt umber for everything. Using a dark brown like this gives us a nice foundation to build up some grimy metal. I've also used the same paint to base coat the ground. Now this, this paint didn't cover super well, uh, you need a couple of coats here and there, but big, big flat panels like this, this is just a base coat. It's okay if it goes a little bit onto the gray, it's okay if it goes a little bit onto the other parts of the build. It's all going to get covered up in the wash stage. And there we go, overcooked umber on everything. Next I came in with a foam brush, I uh, just got these at the dollar store, dollar store foam brushes, and a little bit of red oxide. Now this looks really, really bright, and this is kind of an ugly stage for the build, where you got these giant patches of orange all over the place, but those, those do get toned down a lot by subsequent steps. I've used this irregularly everywhere, but I've made extra certain to hit all of the large areas of corrosion. Okay, so now here I've got a couple of Liquitex paints. We're going to be using these to paint all the metal. The silver is a bit bright on its own, so I toned it down with some iridescent graphite, which is sort of a black metallic. I had so many struggles getting this paint to work. I tried dry brushing with this, this makeup brush, and it wasn't covering very well. I tried the other brush, and it still wasn't covering well. The makeup brush was huge and kind of got paint all over the place. But eventually, we, we figured out how to make it work, and we used a smaller brush for the parts where I needed to be a little bit more precise with it, and the makeup brush for the parts where I had a lot of space to work with. Uh, stippling turned out to be one of the best techniques that I found for getting this paint to cover effectively and still leave a nice texture without any brush strokes. Here you see if you brush it across with that makeup brush you leave weird brush strokes but if you stipple it on you leave a more random texture that doesn't look like it's just paint. So you just gotta get a little bit of paint on the brush, wipe off the rest of your paint, and then... and then just dab it all over the build. And this actually covered quite well. I was pretty happy with the result from this. 
And you can already see that the red oxide orange has been toned down a lot by having the metal over top. So this step is sort of an extra step that I wanted to do to add a little bit more detail. Uh, if you remember, on the picture of the original build, I had a big radioactive sign on the side of the storage tank and some lettering. I had just painted that on, on the old build, and on this build I wanted to get a little bit more detailed and believable with it. So here I am, just putting some old drafting skills to use, drawing some stencil letters, and I will cut these out with the hobby knife, and use that piece of masking tape as a stencil. This is really only a one-use technique, because it's very, very difficult to get the tape up without damaging the stencil, especially on letters like this where you have thin pieces of tape that can tear really easily. But it works very, very well, as you'll see. So here I am with the hobby knife, just cutting out all of the letters. This was a really, really sort of involved process that took quite a lot of time. I've sped it up here for you, so you don't have to watch this all in real time as I cut out all of these tiny, tiny little angled cuts with the knife. It's important to be a little bit precise in this stage because any, uh, any cuts you go over on the tape will make the stencil more fragile. Yeah, you see here the stencil's been damaged a little bit, and I needed to actually cut the tape in half and do the stencil in two parts in order to get the correct lettering without damaging it too much. You can hopefully tell that the, the struggle of getting the stencil up was, was pretty real. I don't know if I'd do this kind of technique again, I might just buy a stencil, but as it was, with what I had on hand, this worked pretty well. Alright, and there we go, we've got the stencil up, we're gonna try and place it centered. I didn't get this exactly centered, it's off by a little bit, but you don't really notice. And you can also see that, unfortunately, I did damage the stencil on the, the U and the M there on the end. But, tapping that down into place with the tweezers worked okay, and then I was just able to fix the lettering after the fact. So what I'm using to paint these letters on is Extra Opaque Blue-Gray. This is part of Vallejo's Extra Opaque game line, which is just highly pigmented paints that cover very, very well. I love these paints, they have great coverage. You really only need one thin coat to get a nice, thick, opaque color. So just fill in all the letters with the blue-gray paint. And then we get to the part that the internet really loves. Here it is, just... And as you can see, the letters did overlap the stencil a little bit, especially where they were damaged, but I was able to just patch that up using a bit of gunmetal paint. It looks different now, but once I've covered it with black wash, everything will be pretty well disguised. Now here, I want to show how easy it can be, really, to do good-looking freehand. 
I'm painting an Imperial Aquila on the side of the tank. That was a nice, big, representative symbol of the Warhammer 40k universe. I thought it would make a great addition, and it does look good on the finished build. But you can see by the process here that this really is just a series of geometric shapes, and it's not that hard to get it to look good. I am helped out a little bit in terms of something like the Aquila that's supposed to be relatively symmetrical. That large patch of corrosion texture there would hide most of the other wing, and that does make it easier to make it look pretty good. You don't need to worry about getting the things exactly symmetrical. You've got a nice, uh, nice cheaty coverage aid there. You only really have to paint one half of this correctly. But I really do hope that this kind of thing would encourage people to try freehand on their own builds. You've got a nice big open surface like this. It's not too difficult to make even relatively complex symbols like the Aquila look good. With just being careful with your brush strokes, being precise with uh, what you put on, and with measuring things out a little bit. It also, of course, helps to have a reference image to work for. It's not shown here, but I did have a image of the Aquila that I was working from to make this as accurate as I could. And then just to finish up here on the other side, you see the other wing started in about the same place, try and get that bottom half symmetrical, and then just up the sides here, paint in a little bit of those feathers, and kind of dab some grey onto the corrosion so it looks like the paint has been there originally but has sort of flaked off as the metal underneath it corroded. Next step is just to give the concrete areas a quick dry brush of grey-green. This is a sort of concrete-y type color. It works pretty well. Uh, I didn't have the best brush for dry brushing here. These brushes are pretty cheap and old and they didn't work great. If you got a better brush, I think this would come out a lot better. But the wash does, again, hide a lot of imperfections in this step. The final effect here is pretty subtle, but I do think that the extra color variation in the concrete does help. So here we are slapping a coat of black wash all over everything. This is just a homemade DIY black wash using Liquitex black ink and a bunch of distilled water and some flow improver. Uh, also known as black magic sauce but that just goes over everything the whole build gets covered with this and you can really see how it starts to bring everything together With the black wash out of the way, the only thing left is the details. I use extra opaque brown here to cover everything that's going to be gold. All of the lights around the build get a coating of brown. The parchment all got a coating of brown. The purity seals. All of that kind of stuff. I also used it to base the toolbox here, which was going to be red. Then bone for the parchments and purity seals. A base of bloody red for the wax on the purity seals and the toolbox. Nice highlight of fiery orange. So the lights also got orange, then a bit of yellow.
And finally, it was time to paint up some computer screens. Covered these with opaque green, and then some dark green, and then some dark green mixed with a little tiny bit of black ink. Highlight of intermediate green, some white reflection marks, and then I mixed a little bit of intermediate green into the white in order to make sort of a mint color and used that to draw some text and readout information on these little screens. Then it was time to come back in for the metallics. The golds all got a base of glorious gold, a highlight of polished gold, and a wash of sepia ink. I used that same sepia ink to wash the parchments to make them appear grubby and dirty, and then with a wet brush just come back in afterwards and clean up some of the ink near the middle to give that a nice faded out effect near the edges. Black ink for text, and then it was time to come up to the smokestacks. This is one of Vallejo's mecha effect paints. I got some basic coverage on the top of the smokestacks with, for engine soot with a regular brush, and then came in with a beat up old dry brush to feather that in. Now here you can see I came in with that opaque blue-gray and covered the Aquila a little bit, and then grabbed a rust effect paint, painted over all the corrosion, and start added some little rusty streaks. I did these streaks in actually three different colors, sepia ink, black ink, and that rust effect. And the final result is a lot of different colored, really dirty, grimy streaks coming down. I think it looks pretty good. Quick overbrush of brown for the ground. And getting into a DIY snow effect. So you can see what we got here is baking soda, Mod Podge gloss, and the uh, white paint. And I have mixed those up into this. And uh, the final effect comes out, I put on a test base here, like that. Little uh, snow. So that looks pretty good, I think. Uh, the mixture is very pasty. This brush is going to be absolutely scuffed. But, you know, we've got this horrific baking soda and glue and Mod Podge nonsense. And we're just gonna... So this is a really cheap DIY snow effect. The white paint in there is to help prevent this from yellowing later on. I've heard baking soda can have some problems with that, but adding the white paint should keep it white. And this whole step is to just go around, dab on a bunch of snow. For some, for some of the areas that were a little harder to get into, I did use a coffee stir stick instead of the larger brush. But for the ground and a lot of the other areas, just dabbing it on with the brush. Tapping the brush lightly against the tops of the railings here leaves a little dusting of the snow that looks pretty good, pretty realistic. And mounting the snow up against objects is also a good way to cover the, a lot of ground with a very minimal amount of material. I left the smokestacks free from snow, reasoning that they would get warm enough to melt it, but everything else got a pretty good coating. The benefit of having the Gloss Mod Podge here is that it will dry a little bit shiny. Baking soda by itself is pretty matte. And there we go, final effect, build is done. 
Snow's on everything. It'll dry nice and hard, so no need to worry about that. And there you go. 